Hello, this video is one of a series of lectures for the distance education course entitled Woody Landscape Plants, a component of the Prairie Horticulture Certificate Program. This video is the first that explains how to use a dichotomous key. A dichotomous key really is a kind of a device, you might call it, usually in a written form that can be used to identify something like an organism or any other object. What does it really mean to be dichotomous? Well, the root of the word dichotomous, di, means two, and really this is really the key aspect of this kind of key in that it's based on a series of choices between two different things as you move through the key. So you keep deciding between two alternatives, and then it takes you to two more alternatives, and so on, until you reach your destination. It can be something simple like color choices, is it red or is it yellow? Is it round or is it square? You make your choice and then you move down that pathway. They tend to proceed from the more general characteristics to more specific and detailed characteristics until eventually you've actually identified your object or your plant or whatever you have. In the, in the case of plants, it's probably the, really the only reliable method for identifying them so that it's important to understand how they work and how, how they're made. Usually with plants, the key usually stops by the time you get to the species level. So that's usually where you're trying to get to. <clears throat> now, to illustrate how a dichotomous key works, we're going to look at a couple of uh, examples that aren't even really so much plant-based, although this one is in a sense because it's about beans. <clears throat> what you see here at the top right-hand corner is a picture of some beans. and just think for a moment now that we have no idea, we know nothing about beans, but we've been given this handful of beans, and we want to know what kind of beans are these. So even if we don't know anything about beans, theoretically this key should be able to help us identify which beans we have. <coughs> the first thing you notice that on the left hand side is you have numbers, two numbers that are identical. And this is an important concept. This is where the two choices come in. The first choice in this particular example is that the bean it could be round. And if it is, you really don't have to go any further because there's only one round bean in this particular key. Remember, a key is just put together. You can put as many things in it as you want or as few things in it as you want. This one has several beans in it. There's only one that's round. So in this case, if it's round, it would be a garbanzo bean. While you don't have a round bean, if you look at the beans up here, they're more uh, similar to the second choice, which is bean is elliptical or oblong, in which case you, then you have to continue. And if you go across, you'll see it doesn't go to a specific identification. There's more than one. So you have to go to a, a second, you have to go to number two. It takes you to number two, which then on the right hand side, which then leads you back to no, uh, the left hand side. Now I just want to point out something very important about keys. On the right hand side is the number that you're it tells you where to go next. And there's only can be one of these on this side, otherwise it would be really ambiguous. You can only have one number two or one number three on this side. So when you get to number two, it tells you, oh, you've got to go back and look at two more choices of something. So go back to the left hand side over here and you'll see that you can go to two number twos. You look at the first example. Is the bean white? Uh, if it was, it would be a white northern. But no, you look at your beans up here, no, they're not white. They're, they have dark pigments, which is the second choice, dark pigments. So now you go to three. So again, you've got one number on the right-hand side. So now you've gone to three, and now what do you do next? Well, now you have to find the different alternative choices for number three. So you go back to the left-hand side, where your two choices are the bean pigmentation is mottled, meaning it has sort of splotches. And if that was it, it would be a pinto bean. But you look at your bean again, no, it's not really modeled. It looks pretty even. It's evenly pigmented. So your second choice is the one you're looking for. So you go to four. You still haven't identified the object, so that's why you go to four. So now you have two. Four tells you you've got to go to see what the two choices under the number four on the left-hand side are. So you do that. So there's two choices. Is the bean black? No, but if it was, it would be a black bean. Is the bean reddish brown? Oh, yes, you look at it, it pretty much is. So now you know you have a kidney bean. So you've identified it as a kidney bean, even though you might not have known anything about these beans. 
And again, you should re realize that you've had, all the way along the left-hand side, you've had two, two numbers that are the same for your two choices. On the right-hand side, only one number can be of each kind can be uh, in existence. <coughs> well, now we're going to look at a more a slightly more complicated key, but it actually is the same principles as the one I just showed you. This is one of the key to tools. Imagine that you come a person that came out of the Stone Age. You know how to read, you know your English, but you don't know anything about the modern tools. And so you find this tool and you think, well, what is this thing? So let's take a look. So again, the first thing you're going to be looking in your key is uh, look for number one or, or whatever you want to start with. And the one choice would be a tool with a edge designed for cutting. The second choice would be, if you look down below, oh, it's a tool without a cutting edge, blunt surfaces for fastening object. Notice that the number ones are not necessarily together. And in fact, in this case, it's better to have them separated because everything under this number, first number one, you want all of it to follow logically so you can follow the key. You want to organize it so that you can follow along rather well. So, if it was, for example, the first choice, then what you have is you can go to, it takes you to number two. If it's the first choice that it, had, it was designed for cutting objects, then you go to number two. So, number two says, well, I have to have two choices of number two, so if you go, you notice that there are two, and then so on, and we will go through an example in a moment. When you're designing a key, I want to point out that when you have two choices of number three in this case, like this, if you're designing a key, and we'll talk about that later, it's always nice to have the first one where you, you're finished, where you've actually identified it, and then the one where you're going to continue on to be below it so that you can, it goes logically from there over to there, rather than having to have it interrupted by this particular line. So that's just a, a kind of organization that we'll look at when we talk about making a key. So here's the object that you found when you came in from the, <coughs> from the Stone Age. And you wonder, what kind of tool is this? It looks rather intriguing. I could probably use this. Well, the first thing you notice is that you ask the question, is it, uh, is it designed for cutting objects or is it something for fastening objects? Well, you're not really sure, but it sure looks like something that might, you, you've got these sort of sharp things along the edge here. It looks like it might be for cutting objects. So that's pretty much what your first choice would be. You eliminate the other choice and you say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's a tool with an edge designed for cutting objects, so therefore I'm going to go to number two, and then there are two two um, options for number two: is the cutting edge toothed or is the cutting edge not toothed? So if you look at the cutting edge here, you can see these look like teeth to me. So I would think I would choose this one where it's cutting edge toothed. So I choose that one. So I now then says, oh, what do I do now? Oh, I go to number three. I still haven't got there yet because it tells me to go to another number. So that means I go to number three, and there's going to be two of them on the left hand side, as you can see. So the next choice, is the cutting edge circular, motorized, or is the cutting edge not circular? Well, if I look down at this, that doesn't look circular to me, that looks pretty straight. So I would say it's not circular, so my choice is to be not circular. And now what do I do? It takes me to number four, because I still not have, haven't identified it. So now I have to go over to the left-hand side and look at the two choices for number four. One is that it's a large blade, narrower at one end, and the other attached to a handle. Or is it a small blade with the same width throughout inserted into a motorized compartment? Well, I came from the Stone Age, and I may not know much about motors, but I do know that this is narrower at this end than this end, the blade, and I noticed that there's kind of a handle here. So I'd say, oh, I think I can eliminate this one, and it is the large blade, narrower at one end, and I have now identified it as a cross-cut handsaw. And you'll notice you can't go any further, so that's it. I'm done. I've now identified the object that I set out to do. So that's basically how a key works. And uh, once you know how to use a key like this, you can use it. They can become more. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. Plant keys can be a little more complicated, but the principle is the same. And in the next uh, lecture, what we will do is we will actually I will show you some images of different plants, and uh, you will have a key to use to follow along and see if you can key out some of the plants, and we will do that in our next lecture.